Welcome to another Parent Teacher Video Lesson from the EarlyGiftedManual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. And now I'd like to introduce you to a game called Fascination Checkers. Uh, it's a game uh, for two people. You and your child can, can play it. And um, it's a great game for developing uh, all kinds of skills, but especially uh, the skill of strategizing. It's a, it's a competition game, I guess you'd say. So um, as you can see, I put out uh, this game here. This is... Uh, a game I own, and it's and it was manufactured in 1962 by the Remco company, and I love it. But it's no longer being manufactured. Um, so if you want one of these, you have to go on eBay, and maybe there'll be one there. It's kind of a rare game, but um, that's that's no reason to worry because uh, you can easily make your own game board with some graph paper and using anything as game pieces. Um, however, what's nice about this game is uh, there are little depressions in the board. Uh, let me move this around so you can see what I mean, that the game pieces fit into. So uh, if you're playing with a, a child, sometimes they can bump the board and knock all the pieces around. You can't do that with this game. It's very stable. So that's one thing I like about it. And uh, like I said, it's a two-person game. And this particular game, um, there are 32, each, each player has 32 pieces to work with. Um, so, uh, once again, uh, you could start out with a big game like this, but what I, what I recommend is to uh, uh, use this game board, which is simply um, what I mentioned uh, at, at the beginning of the lesson. It's a, uh, it's a printable off of the early gifted manual, so you can make a copy or two of one of these fascination checkers. And as you can see, it's a simpler game. It's smaller, not as many squares, so it's a, actually a perfect way for you and your child to uh, uh, get started with this game. So. Um, I'm going to be using, because uh, this is what I had, these Unifix cubes, two different colors. And these work just fine as game pieces. You know, whatever you have for game pieces is good. You might have fancy ones. You know, you might want to use coins, although those are kind of hard to pick up. That's why I like these. They're easy to pick up and move around. So let me uh, place all these on the board and show you how to set up uh, the fascination checkers board. As you can see, nothing gets set up on the on the gray here, just on the black and white uh, squares. And now that you're uh, set up, the game board is set up, uh, you're ready to actually play the game. Okay, the, the mini fascination checkerboard has been set up and uh, perhaps uh, I could just sort of show you a, a simulated game. Of course, since there's not another person here, I'll have to take uh, be the player for both sides, represent the player for another side. So. Uh, um, hope you can uh, 
understand that and deal with that. And also here, as I'm explaining the game to you, I will be sort of reading off a, a rules list here that comes with the game and which you can access online um, because I want to make sure I don't forget anything here or, or leave any of the uh, important information uh, in terms of rules out of the lesson here. So, um, as you can see, we've got the board set up and um, I think the first thing to say is the object of the game and the object of fascination checkers is to take away the other player's checkers by jumping them and removing them from the board. So it's a lot like regular checkers, isn't it? But as we'll see, there, there are differences. Um, we've already set up the board. I've showed you how to do that. And um, uh, if you want to decide who goes first, and I think there's a slight advantage to that, especially in this little mini board we're, we're working with here. Uh, if you want to decide that, uh, you, you can, who, who goes first, you can toss a coin and, and the winner gets to choose. So um, we're sort of set up for a game here. Uh, you can only jump from side to side and forward and backward. So obviously that's very different than checkers where you can go diagonally. There are no diagonal moves uh, in fascination checkers. Uh, side to side, backwards, forwards. Cannot jump diagonally. And uh, you can play anywhere on the board anytime it's your turn to move in, in any direction you want as long as, obviously, as long as you stay on the squares. Um, and of course, uh, when you jump your opponent, you remove uh, his marker, his game piece, whatever you want to call it, from the board. And um, um, I think I'll say this right now before I actually uh, start playing the game here. So when a player can no longer jump, the other player keeps on jumping until the first player can jump again. And when no jumps are, are left, the game is over. Player with the most men left on the board is the winner. But let's actually play a little bit here first so you can understand that. And then I'll go back to that again. All right, let's say purple is the first uh, person moving here. And I hope I can keep the moves, uh, moves straight so uh, I don't get confused uh, who went last. But let's say purple just decides to uh, do this. And I'm going to be purple and I've captured, let's say I'm playing with my daughter and I've captured one of my daughter's yellow uh, game pieces. So that's a move for purple and now it's yellow's turn to move. And well, there are a lot of places yellow could move, but uh, there's one I see that's particularly good right away and, and that's that uh, a yellow piece can double jump uh, two of the purples and like this and like this so good for yellow so uh, yellow my my daughter I think I said so to speak could r remove two pieces and put them over by her her side this is my side over here and let's see it's purple's turn again huh that's my turn let's see um, Maybe I'm just, I'm kind of making it up as I go along here. So maybe purple does this. And now it's yellow's turn. And yellow has several jumps. But maybe uh, yellow decides to take um, this one. There. And away it goes. Okay. So now uh, it's my turn again. Uh, purple is moving. Oh my gosh! I see like a triple jump for purple. Watch this. One, two, three. Oh man, look at that. And uh, now it's uh, yellow's turn. Um, let's see. Oh, and look! Yellow has a double jump. Boom, boom. Takes two purples. Now it's uh, purple's turn. Let's see where my purple want to move. Um, here. 
Now it's yellow's turn. Uh-oh, look at that. Yellow has a double jump. Boom, boom, it takes two purple. And are there any more moves? No, I don't think so. There's no more jumps that can be made. So we'll go back to uh, where I kind of ended here with the uh, instructions. When a player can no longer jump, the other player keeps on jumping until the first player can jump again. And when no jumps are left, which is where we're at right now, the game is over. The player with the most men left on the board is the winner. And that would, of course, be the yellow. So my daughter uh, beat me in this game. And look, I'm putting... The, I'm putting these on the wrong side. These should be over here, but uh, yep, my daughter beat me in this game. She had two left on the board, and I had one. So that's just kind of an idea of, of how you would play the game, uh, this mini game of fascination checkers. And um, another uh, var variation of the rule you can use, and it's a variation I like to use when I play, um, it makes for a slightly different game. You can allow players to move the game pieces one square forward, backward, or side to side if a jump is not possible. So, um, of course, that will make the game a little bit different and a little bit longer and maybe with some different strategy. But uh, that's an option, so you might want to consider that. Obviously, this game goes pretty fast, so uh, as your child masters the game and maybe as you master the game too you can create larger game boards like I mentioned previously you can make up your own game boards with a big sheet of graph paper and and some markers or whatever you need and uh, more game pieces so that's how you play fascination checkers